Okay, so the next thing that we're going to deal with here is counter examples. Now, in my opinion, I think this is probably a skill that you should always be doing in math because um, you find the further on you go and the more things you were to do in math, the more important this becomes. Um, basically, there's this sort of like uh, cycle that you would do um, as a mathematician. You'd come up with some theory that you have and then you sort of, you don't need to jot this down. <laughs> and then what you do is you attack. And eventually you attack your theory so much that you say, well, maybe my theory is true because I'm still not finding any examples that show me this theory is false. So, you know, doing math is a lot of work. I'm sure you all agree. Especially when you get up to something like university where there's much, much more complicated math in there. You don't even want to bother picking your pen up until you're absolutely convinced that your efforts are going to be worth it. So that's why you make such attacks on yourself and you do these, uh, you look for these counter examples to disprove a theory. So that's what we're going to do here. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, you can break this cycle and then you'd go to proof where you would uh, actually prove your theory to be true. So let's uh, take a look. See if we can find a counter example. Here's my first pattern I'm going to show you. This is the number of dots on a circle. Exciting, isn't it? Earth shattering. Let's call NASA. So I put two dots and I end up with two regions. Now I'm going to put three dots. Now I have four regions. So I am going to sell this to you that it's always a power of two. That is two, that is four. I'm going to make a prediction here. Eight, 16, 32. Can you prove me wrong? Okay, so let's see here. I've got four dots to do now. One, two, three, four. And if I connect all the dots, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's enough, right? You guys all believe me? Do the six, okay, let's do six dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's going to take a, a minute or two to draw all these, but that's okay. It's going to look pretty anyways. <laughs> oh, not bad. Okay. Um, there is actually a branch of math that studies dots and lines. That is called the complete graph on six nodes. So if you want to see pretty pictures of things, you can look up graph theory. Anyways, um, how many regions are there in here? I'm going to have to zoom in to show you that. So let's uh, zoom this thing in. Okay, so let's see. Mitchell doesn't believe it's going to work here. Um, I'll pick purple. And it's going to have to be a fine, a small one. So here we go. One, two... <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Color by numbers, yeah. Oh, did I miss any? Did I miss any? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did. I get them all. <laughs> well, I actually the funny thing is I believe there's supposed to be thirty-one. Anyways, I think I've missed one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 
29, 30. Well, anyways, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it is 30, but uh, the point is it's not 32 here. So I'm not so, uh, that theory I had, yeah, that theory I have isn't going to work. Um, it is not always a power of two. Um, Mitchell, you had a, you said go right to the last one. That's actually not a bad strategy. And that's one thing that's going to help you in the, the next couple of examples. Because look at all the work you had to do just to get to that last one. Like I said before, if you really want to convince yourself that something's true, you shouldn't just pick a simple way of doing it. You should pick ways that are you know, more complicated that you'll say, yeah, if this one works, I'm more likely to believe it's true. So for example, in this next one, here's a neat pattern you can try in your calculator. You could just start doing this systematically and going, uh, well, let's just see, what's the next number in the pattern, just so I know that you guys uh, understand the pattern there. What's the next thing I'm going to put into the calculator? Okay, so you could just keep going systematically and checking that the pattern works, or you could think about it and say to yourself, well, can I pick a number I'd be more satisfied with than plain Jane 5? If you'd like to, maybe it doesn't work on 5. It's not to say 5 isn't a good choice, but strategize. You might be able to get your answer quicker when you strategize. Has anybody found one that doesn't work? 1, 2, 3, 4, how, how far did you go? So you, you, you did this one and it didn't work? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Did you? Can you double check it? Yeah, I think it works. Oh, your calculator's not big enough to enter that in? That's a shame. Think of all the mathematics you're missing out on. So what do you get now? Sorry, what was, can somebody with the, what was the two? Um, so we end up with uh, one, two, nine, which doesn't work. Oh no, it was pretty until 10. How could you predict it ahead of time that 10 would have been a good choice? It's a bigger number? 10 interrupts the few digits before Okay, what do you mean by that? Like, um, if you try to put 10 around, it's like two digits, and, um... Oh, okay. This, this theory was clearly expecting that you'd only be working with single digits up to nine. Yeah, so it's mostly working on single digits. It's because we've added two digits now, it falls apart. It wouldn't work if you <coughs> like, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, zero, zero instead of, um... Oh, so you figured out the fix. Okay. How about this one? Here's an interesting pattern. One squared is one. Eleven squared is one, two, one. 111 squared is 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. Does that keep working, or can you find a counterexample? All right, share some knowledge with us. About, well, let's put something in the calculator just so I can write it up on the screen here. So let's try, um, I think, let's try eight ones. That should fit in your calculator. What do you get with eight ones squared? Something fairly large. <laughs> one, two, hang on a sec. Say that one more. One, two, three, four. Okay, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Oh my god. Did it work? Did it? Shoot, that's not a counterexample. All right, let's see if we can do one bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, does it work with 10? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I just, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And what I end up here with is I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 9, 0, 0, 9, 8. So anyway, it doesn't matter what we get after that because it failed right here. So that's good enough. Unfortunately, you, you can't know your perfect 
11 squared all the way up to whatever you want just by doing that pattern. Okay, last one. Is it possible that every number can be expressed as two prime numbers, uh, unique prime numbers? So here's a list of prime numbers that you can play around with. Uh, let's say numbers, that's good. Let's say numbers larger than uh, two, okay? So the inclination, well, I don't think so is probably a good uh, guess since we're working on counter examples. Anything larger than two, right? What about three? Three? Two unique prime numbers. Okay. So yeah, three wouldn't work because it's already prime. It would be hard to do, right? So then why don't we just adjust this to say um, and is not prime itself. Four? So four is? Oh, four doesn't work because we can only do it with two plus two. That are, and those aren't unique. So that's enough for a counterexample. We don't need to keep searching. My theory's failed. <laughs>